After the Chinese Communist Party's Economic Work Conference concluded on December 10th, it's no longer speculation but a known fact that the economy is of grave concern to the central leadership. Government employees in Shanghai, Guangdong, Zhejiang, and other wealthy coastal provinces are receiving 15 to 30 percent pay cuts. People attribute the pay cuts to the deteriorating economy and the real estate crisis. Some believe the cuts are a political move to achieve the goal of common prosperity. Others speculate that the purpose is for raising funds for a military resolution of Taiwan's reunification. But the vast majority of Chinese have sensed an economic hard time approaching. Even China's economists are publicly sending warning messages. Hello everyone, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. Welcome to Lay's Real Talk, I'm Lei. Professor Sun Liping, the outspoken scholar and economist I featured in one of my previous videos, recently discussed the unemployment problem in China. He gave five reasons why China is facing a wave of unemployment. Uh, 失业浪潮的呢 有一个数字我不知道准确不准确啊，就在过去五年的时间里啊，从中国转移到越南的这种外资企业就已经达到两这个两万家。呃，你可以想，这是会涉及到多少人就业的问题。I found these multinational companies that either have or are moving out of China. Even the New York Times has moved part of its China office to South Korea. Professor Sun then talks about the situation of China's private businesses. 第三个呢，就是中小企业的不景气，它的倒闭或者是裁员，又造成了大量的失业的人员。第四个呢，就是前一段时间对于教培的整顿，有人说这涉及到一千万人的就业的问题。第四个呢，跨界跨国电商。呃，随着国外对于跨国电商的整顿特别亚马逊，所涉及到中国的呢，这电商大体就得有大约五万家。所以这是一个非常严峻的一个问题啊。那么现在呢，应当说可能还仅
His public warning is unusual in a country that rarely sanctions bad news about its economy. His speech is widely believed to be Beijing's precautionary shout to the people, telling them that they should be psychologically prepared for fiscal difficulties. The 58-year-old Li Daokui received his PhD from Harvard University and was a former member of the Monetary Policy Committee of China's Central Bank. In recent years, he has been invited to advise Xi Jinping, Li Keqiang, and others in Zhongnanhai, the party headquarters. In a recent video, he described receiving a stimulus check in the United States while he was in China, and he shared his perspective on the American economy. Please take a look. 讲个小插曲哈，我在美国生活了十五年，啊，曾经我是有他的社会保社会保险的号的，啊，我在一个朋友还有个地址，前几天啊，这个朋友打电话给我，说在你的信，在我信箱里发现一个支票啊，美国联邦政府给了你两千美元呢、啊，我是千万别要用，千万别别千万别去银行，麻烦了，讲不清楚了，你明白吧？就是只要你有涉案号，你曾经纳过税。不管三七二十一，给你个啊，根据家庭情况，给你个几百美元一几几千美元，这是真事儿啊。所以我哪敢用啊？我就告诉大家，这个确实美国是是很慷慷慨的。这么慷慨之下，那通货膨胀很好理解啊，因为美国人不储蓄的，突然天天来掉馅儿饼，那马上消费啊。所以这个债务危机这一轮啊，不管它疫情延不延续，会引发通货膨胀啊，它购买力上升了。而且坦率的讲，我这个话在美国不敢讲啊，跟那门人骂我，把很多人养懒了。有了这个支票之后，他不工作了，所以很多人现在你看用工难吗？对吧 ？Professor Lee is considered the top leadership's official economist. Maybe that's why he didn't dare deposit the check sent by the American government. But one crucial factor is missing from each professor's talk. Neither discussed the impact of the pandemic on the Chinese economy. Which is serious. Recently, the COVID outbreak in China has worsened, with the local government now requiring factories in the Yangtze River Delta region to temporarily suspend work under a zero tolerance policy. Take Zhejiang Province as an example. Three rounds of large-scale testing have been conducted within two weeks. Nearly 580,000 people have been quarantined. Including more than 58,000 in centralized quarantine camps, all residents have been asked to stay at home, and vehicles are not allowed on the roads. From December 9th to 13th, at least 16 publicly traded companies announced the suspension of work. The stock prices of a number of them dropped between 4 to 7 percent. The stock of Jinsheng Electromechanical was down nearly 5 percent on December 13th. And the price of Farmer Stone Technology fell more than six percent. Zhejiang is a major industrial province and shipping center, and its one trillion dollar economy accounted for six percent of China's total GDP last year. The province's port of Ningbo, Zhoushan, is the world's third largest container port, but the port has recently tightened entry procedures. Which has led to concern that shipping at the port will be disrupted again. In August, one confirmed case of the virus in Ningbo shut down the port for several weeks, causing a shipping jam and supply chain disruption. The CCP's zero tolerance policy for combating the virus affects major industrialized regions, as well as smaller border cities. The southern city of Rili in Yunnan Province is a jewelry trading center on the border with Myanmar. But in the past three months, Rili's local economy has been on the verge of collapse after three consecutive city closures. Not long ago, Rili's former deputy mayor posted on WeChat that the pandemic had mercilessly plundered the city, draining it of its last vestiges of life. Local media reported that a toddler had been tested 70 times for COVID. This ruthless approach to eliminating the virus is being played out all over China, where more than 40 cities have found cases in the last few weeks. National economic growth has been the number one justification used by the Chinese Communist Party to legitimize its rule. With the economy in crisis and people's livelihood quickly disappearing, 
citizens will question the CCP's legitimacy. So 2022 will be an important year. We'll see what ensues. I recommend the video in which Professor Sun talks about China in 75 years and another video that explains why China's economic reform did not work. That's all for today. Thank you. I'll see you soon.